Hello, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video we are going to be discussing how we graph quadratic equations that are written in standard form. So a quick reminder here, the standard form means that our quadratics are written just like we would see a polynomial with three terms. So these quadratics are going to be written in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now these special quadratics here, written in standard form, have some special properties just like anything else. So what we're really looking at is finding that vertex of our graph and then using that vertex to continue graphing. Now remember, here are a couple characteristics about quadratics. The vertex is this spot right at the bottom or top. Now our vertex here, it determines where our function goes from when it's decreasing. So it decreases all the way down until it gets to our vertex and then it switches and it starts to increase. Now our vertex is also very special because the x value of our vertex we call the axis of symmetry. And what that axis of symmetry means is that on either side of the vertex, if I go over one in either direction, my y value is going to be the exact same. And so that's super important. When we have these quadratics in standard form, these quadratics actually have some special characteristics that is important for us to know when it comes to graphing. So the first characteristic that is important is depending on our a value, our quadratic is going to look a little different. So if a is greater than zero or a is a positive number, it's going to open up. And remember, we say it looks like a smiley face. And if a is less than zero or a is negative, then it's going to open down like a friendly face. Now, some of these other characteristics is this plus c is going to be our y-intercept. So that tells us where it crosses the y-axis. Our x-coordinate of our vertex, also known as our axis of symmetry, so those are the same thing, is going to be negative b over 2a, where b is our middle term here and a is our first term. So what we're going to do when we graph these is we are going to use this axis of symmetry and this vertex point to figure out what that first value is. And then we're going to just look at a couple points on either side of it and plug those in in order to figure out where those x values are. So let's get started. Let's first start by figuring out what our axis of symmetry is and our vertex of our graph. So in this first example, we are going to look at those two things. Remember, our axis of symmetry, or AOS, is defined when we're in standard form as x equals our negative b value over 2 times a. So in this case, 2 is our a value, 8 is our b value, and our c value is that negative 1. So to find our axis of symmetry, what I'm going to do is I want my negative b value over 2 times the a value. So I'm going to substitute those numbers in. Negative, my b value is 8 over 2 times 2. Well, that simplifies down to negative 8 over 4, which equals negative 2. So that means the x value, x equals negative 2, is my axis of symmetry. This also means that when I write my vertex, my vertex is going to be negative 2 comma something. Now, how do we figure out what that something is? So this is part A here our axis of symmetry. To figure out that y value of our vertex, all we have to do is substitute in that x value or our axis of symmetry value into our original function and figure out what it is. So I'm going to substitute negative 2 into our function and I get 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 1. Now as we expand this, negative 2 squared is 4, 8 times 4, or 2 times 4 is 8, plus 8 times negative 2 is negative 16 plus 1. So this gives me a y value of negative 7. So our vertex here is going to be negative 2, negative 7, where our axis of symmetry is that negative 2x. So it's so important that we have these because as we start to graph, I now know something about my graph. I know some characteristics. I know that my graph is going to be centered here at negative 2 at x equals negative 2. And I also know that my vertex is going to be at negative 2, negative 7. By looking at my function itself, I can also see that it's going to open up. Now, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but I know it's going to open up 
it's going to be symmetric about x equals negative 2, and our vertex is going to be at negative 2, 7. So let's continue practicing finding this axis of symmetry and the vertex of our graph of the graph of our function. And I want you guys to, we're going to do this first one all together, and then the second one you're going to try on your own. So remember, to get that axis of symmetry, our equation is going to be x equals negative b divided by 2a. So looking at this equation here, I've got 3x squared minus 2x. Notice how we have our a value and our b value, but we are missing our c value. We have a plus 0 here. Now remember back here, our y-intercept is our c. So what this number actually tells us is that when we graph this, wherever our vertex is, the other point that it's going to cross at is 0. And that's super helpful when it comes to graphing our vertex, graphing our quadratic. So again, we are just looking for the axis of symmetry and our vertex. So let's go ahead and substitute in our numbers for the axis of symmetry. So our axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. b is negative, b is a negative 2, so I'm going to have a negative negative 2 over 2 times 3, which is a. A negative times a negative is a positive, so I've got 2 over 6, and that's going to be 1 third. So my x value here in my vertex is going to be 1 third comma something. Okay, we just substitute, and then to find that vertex, we just have to substitute that 1 third into my function. So f of 1 third equals 3 times 1 third squared minus 2 times 1 third, and then plus 0, right? So 1 third squared is going to be 1 ninth. 3 times 1 ninth is the same as 3 ninths, but we can also write 3 ninths as a simplified fraction, which is 1 third. Then 2 times 1 third is actually going to be 2 thirds plus 0. So our y value here is going to be a negative 1 third because 1 third minus 2 thirds is negative 1 third. So our vertex is going to be 1 third negative 1 third. So now that we've practiced this a couple times, what I want you to do is practice finding that axis of symmetry and the vertex of the graph on your own. So we're going to do this with example number two here. So remember, we want to find our axis of symmetry and we want to find our vertex. And remember, to find that vertex, we want to substitute whatever our x value is and our axis of symmetry back into the problem. So I want you to pause the video, work this out on your own as soon as you've finished unpause the video and we can go over it together. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to work out this problem and after you worked it out, hopefully you were able to check it with mine. So as I used our equation here for our axis of symmetry, I got that our axis of symmetry is going to be at negative 3 or our x value of our vertex is going to be negative 3. Then to find that vertex, I took that negative 3 and I substituted it back into my function and ended up getting a vertex of negative 3, negative 4. If you have questions on this, feel free to ask. But identifying this axis of symmetry and the vertex is super crucial when it comes to graphing. And that's what we're going to cover in this next video, how to graph. So please reach out if you have any questions on how to find the axis of symmetry or the vertex of the graph of a function in standard form.